Now we'll look at how to identify problems with RIG and how to solve some of these problems. Many of these issues are not completely solvable, but a carefully constructed RIG will make it unlikely that you'll encounter them. Most of the problems in rigging come from rotations. Rotations are the most common transform in animation, they are also the hardest to calculate, and there is a huge trade-off between accuracy and usability when it comes to using rotations in 3D. A 3D application will use a combination of three methods to achieve rotations. These will be matrix rotations, Euler rotations, and quartonians. Each of these methods has their own advantages and disadvantages. For example, if you want to rotate points between coordinate spaces, this can only be achieved with matrix rotation. However, if you want to interpolate rotations, it is best to use quartonians. You cannot interpolate rotations using matrices. You can do it using Euler angles, but this risks gimbal lock. Rotations are a huge subject, and I will not go into them in much detail. Instead, we will focus on the joint transforms, as the easiest way to maintain correct rotations is to have consistent joint transforms. Paying attention to transforms is not something that is unique to KineFX. It is something you'll have to deal with in any rigging system. However, because KineFX happens in SOPs and is done with points, there are certain things which you get for free which are not necessarily available in other rigging systems. And one of these, which is actually not available in the older Houdini rigging system, is proper visualization of the transforms. We can start by looking at my basic dogleg rig. I have selected the reorient joints node. This node is also our currently active node. And when this node is selected, it will show us the current transforms for the joints. However, if I select any of the other nodes, I will lose the visualizations for those transforms. It would be preferable to be able to see transforms at any time with any node selected. And KineFX allows me to do this. I will hover the mouse cursor over the node and then select the information option from the radial menu. This opens a pop-up menu which contains a lot of information on this node. Among the listed information will be all the attributes pertaining to this node. And we are interested in the point attributes, which in this case have a green color. I want to look at the transform attribute. If I click on the attribute, it will allow me to visualize it in the scene view. These transform visualizations match those in the reorient joint node, and they've all been set to use a negative one in Z as their reference angle. The X and Y axes are also consistent, and these are the transforms that we want to maintain throughout the rig. We can also display any other attributes which are available on this rig, and this can be done using the visualization options. These can be toggled on and off with this button over here. Right clicking on this button will give you a menu which will contain all the attributes you can visualize in the scene. For example, under the scene option here, I can visualize the point positions, and I can visualize the local transforms. But in this case, what we really need is the transforms. The initial transforms for this rig start with the reorient joint node. These joints are consistent, and I want the final rig skeleton to have joints which are consistent with these joints. I can now select my first solver, and we'll see that there is a problem. We can see that the joint has flipped, and the x-axes are facing in the opposite direction from the original joint. This of course could lead to major problems with the deformed mesh. To fix this, we'll need to enter the IK solver and look at the IK solver node. There are a couple of things which we can alter on this solver to make the rig more stable. The first thing that I'll do is alter the joint transformations so that the transformations coming out are consistent with the transformations coming in. We can do this by setting the look at axis and the up axis. I'll start with the look at axis, and I want my z-axis to be facing in a negative direction. So I'll set this option to be negative z. This flips the joints again, and my y-axis is now facing the wrong direction as well. To fix this, I'll need to set the up axis. In my case, I need to set the x-axis, and I need to set this axis to be negative x. So now the joints coming out of the IK solver are consistent with the original points. 
I can then do some basic tests to make sure the joint is not flipping. I'll take my foot control and move it backwards. If I move it back too far, I get flipping on the upper leg. This is because my up vector control is passing behind the joint. This is changing the way the joint is facing, and I can fix this by just moving the control forward. But this also brings up another problem. If possible, you want to avoid having all your joints in a straight line, as this is one of the situations where rotations are most likely to break down. The KineFX solver does have a method to deal with this, however. I can return to my IK solver, I'll scroll down, and I'll check the option Resist Straight. This will try and prevent the joints from ever being in a perfectly straight line, and can hopefully prevent unexpected behavior. That will clean up the basic problems with the IK solver, however we have a far more difficult problem to solve. The more difficult problem comes from the look at solver. I'll need to set the visibility flag on the final solver. When I move the foot controller, the final bone in the leg flips. This happens when the bone crosses over the Y axis. The problem here comes with the way I've set up the look at solver. Currently there is no up vector. This means that the solver has nothing specific to control the roll with, and is going to generate a quaternion based on the current input nodes. The fundamental problem here is you do not know what that angle is going to be. In this case we've seen flipping when we pass any angle that is perpendicular to the XZ plane. To fix this we'll need to create a position that can be used to control the roll of the foot. We'll need to choose the placement of this transform carefully, as this foot will still be able to flip if the transform passes between the root and the look at. In this case I'll be setting this position to be below and behind the leg, as this should give me a decent range of movement. I'm going to try and restrict the flipping to when the bones are in an angle like this. This kind of angle will be unlikely for any creature with a functioning skeleton. Flipping cannot be removed entirely, so instead we'll try and restrict it to extreme angles like this. Or like this. So this will not end flipping, but it will limit it to more extreme situations. I will organize my network quickly, so I have more space to work on the up vector. I'll start by adding a point. To do this I'll get an add node. I will then add a rig doctor node, so I can turn this into a joint. I'll name this joint up vector. I'll set this to initialize transforms and I'll set reorient child to be true, and I'll orient this in the negative z axis. I will then add my point. In this case I'll set the transformation to be negative 0.5 in y, and negative 0.5 in z. I will then join this to my controls, with a merge node. Next I'll make sure that the position is correct in terms of the original controllers, and I'll want to make this point a child of the effector controller. I'll get a reparent joints node, and this will be connected after the merge. We will reparent one joint. The joint will be the up vector, and the parent will be my final controller. I'll now use this point as an up vector. I'll enter the VOP for the look at solver. 
I'll add a get point transform for this point, and this will be connected to the up point on the lookout solver. Next, I'll update the axes for the lookout control. Currently, the X and Y axes are facing the opposite direction from the original rig. We can correct this using the lookout axis and the up axis on the lookout node. The lookout axis will be negative Z. The up vector is now being set with a point, and this will mean that the positive X direction will be facing this point. So I'll need to set the up axis to be a positive X. My joint transforms are now consistent with the original skeleton, and the angle at which flipping is caused is far more difficult to get at. However, flipping will still occur when the up vector crosses the parallel between the final joint and the up transform. If this is a problem you run into regularly, you can also expose the up vector as a control so it can be manually manipulated. Now I have a more stable dog bone rig. The transforms are consistent with the original skeleton, which would help minimize problems with deformation. The rig is also less prone to flipping. The final place where we can choose to set our transforms is in the IK solver. Currently, the root transform moves with the IK solver. If you do not want this, you can set this transform to be static with the Keep Root Transform option. This, however, will be very dependent on what you're trying to rig. We now have a more robust dogleg rig. We also have tools which we can use to debug the rig before we actually have to get to the process of deformation.